I've smuggled people by boat for criminal syndicates. I'm a boat captain as well. So, and they said, this, is a, this is a story which makes me smile and it's relevant to what we've got to say. And right now, the big thing at the moment is um, people smugglers now across the channel. And they're all on the telly, all the government officials, all the politicians, everybody saying, we've got to stop these evil people smugglers, these gangs. There's no gangs. There's some patsies who get stuck in because they can earn a few quid. The people sending the people across from France are the French government. I know that for a fact. I'll tell you for why. Because I was asked to, by a Turkish group of guys who, who were bringing people in by lorry, if I'd bring 20 illegals from Belgium for, um, for money. I said, yeah, of course I'll do that for you. So I went and hired a boat for a £1,000 a day and I went, went to Ramsgate to head, head across the channel when the time was right. And throughout the process, the European government were prevaricating about whether we'd let this happen or not. And they've been absolute twats. And then, day before, I'm, I'm getting stressed from the criminals now, you know, get, the, get your ass over there, they're waiting, they're waiting, they're waiting. There's 20 of them on the, on the side on, on Belgium. And the day before, the boss rings me, he goes, <clears throat> he says, Rob, there's a problem. He says, they want you to give a full safety briefing when the illegals come on board and issue them with a Department of Trade standard life jacket, each, right? Now, I, I was undercover 17 years. No criminal syndicate gives a fuck whether you make it or not across that channel because you've had your money. You've paid up front. Doesn't matter. They will not be forking out on shiny new red life jackets for every boat person on that boat. And that's what's happening now. Every person coming over this channel now on those boats is wearing a Department of Trade issued life jacket. And that's a government stipulation. That's not a people smuggling stipulation. That's not a criminal stipulation. Criminals don't give a shit. So when you talk about people smuggling, is that human trafficking? Human trafficking, yeah, yeah. How bad is human trafficking in the UK? Again, I never, I, I never really got involved in it, I would, so I don't know. Um, but I was involved in smuggling people and drugs across the channel by boat and lorry. And it, it's, the, the way it's being portrayed at the moment is not right. Those people are not being smuggled by criminal gangs. They're being smuggled by governments. So see when you're like, smuggling people over and, and the drugs, is it one big shipment or have you got to keep the operation going to gather more information for our criminals, the big families and the people who are smuggling 300 key over? Like, is that you got everything that you need or is there more to the full story and get, gathering all the evidence? No, but Jim, Jim, with, 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 with an undercover officer being deployed, you get the evidence as the job progresses. You don't just go, you know, like, for, if, if, for example, I'd meet somebody and say, I want you to move some gear. And I go, yeah, well, how do you want to do it? And then he'd say, how do I want to do it? And then I'd say, well, I can do that, but I need to get this, 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 and this. I need some money. And they'd pay some upfront money. And then somebody else might come along, higher up the food chain, to be happy, to, like, you know, to make sure they're hunky-dory. And then you'd go off and do it. Pick up whatever the commodity was, whether it be three tons of puff, 20 keys of heroin, 50 keys of heroin, Bring the kids to Charlie, come back. As soon as the people pick their gear up, need. When does entrapment come into play? Entrapment comes into play if they're not involved in that course of action themselves. They have to be. You can't deploy an undercover and set a job up. Mm -hmm. that, that, we don't do that in the UK. We don't do any um, that kind of stuff where you, where you, like I've heard in America, they set the gear up and everything and then bring the people into it. We don't do that. In, in us, it's always got to be. You've already got to be involved in the course of conduct. Before we, before we can deploy an undercover. So they've already got to have the operation in play? They've got to have the operational intelligence in play, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they've already got to go, they have to write a report and they have to back it with another meeting and say, right, what's your, where, where, what's your evidence and where's your strategy? So you couldn't go to someone and say, look, I've got 100 kilos of smack there, I can get you at a good price? No, huh? no. It, it, no. This wouldn't happen. And the problem with it, when, when people talk about corruption, the big problem with corruption is, for, for me, is... What's to stop somebody snitching on me when I'm corrupt and setting me up? Because the old bill do set the old bill up now on traps, on undercover traps. Mm -hmm. You know, they try and catch bent old bill with, bent, with, with undercover old bill. So if you're undercover, they'll put people undercover to try and trap you? Not, not, not an undercover officer. But if they thought it was bent, yes. If they, if they go in from, say for example, and this is a hypothetical situation, well, Rob's undercover and he's working the lorry and he's bringing back 300 Key of Charlie, but he's banging 10 key on, for him top, on top for himself, they'd get me as well. 